Have you seen yourself in this pattern, which is you're dating somebody, it's going great, you can tell his actions show that he's there for you, he's emotionally present, he you know, comes over, you guys hang out all the time, he even fixes things in your home, that he's physically present when you need him, and yet he says that he's not really ready for a committed relationship, or he's not really ready to take things to another level of true partnership in a committed way. And so you're confused, you're left wondering what is wrong inside of you or the relationship where it feels so right and yet he's saying to you that he cannot fully commit to you right and then you get to a place where you can't take it anymore you know he's not willing to be emotionally available and commit to you fully and so it ends and then the next person that he's in a relationship with he's actually committed to or gets engaged or gets married and you see this pattern happening to you over and over again and maybe it's not that you've even seen this pattern happen to you over and over again it could be that it's just happened to you a couple times even okay but that it has happened to you so this is a pattern that is really important to look at because something deeper is going on it's not just that these men are bad and wrong or they don't know what they want or there's something missing inside of you right because immediately where we go when he is ready for a relationship with someone else another woman then it feels like What's wrong with me? What did I have missing? Why couldn't he commit to me? What is wrong with this situation, right? And when it happens over and over again, it can feel really debilitating and it can make you really question yourself on a deep level. Well, I'm gonna really support you today in helping you see you can absolutely break this pattern. And there's a deeper reason for why you are experiencing this in the first place. But if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, my name is Kavita J. Patel. I am a love and relationship coach. I have been working with thousands of people over the last 15 years to really unlock their love life and help them have what I call soul level love. I also talk about all kinds of ways of relating, which is relating to our family families relating to our children because relationships to me are the key to life. All right, so getting back to how to break this pattern. There's a deeper reason for why you are with somebody that is choosing another person over you consistently. All right, where you're feeling like some other woman is chosen and you're not. And the deeper reason is that it could be stemming from a couple of different things. So one is we're gonna go back into time to look at our relationship with our parents and within our families, because that's where this pattern is coming from. Any significant pattern, which everybody has one, at least one pattern, most of us have many in love and relationship, stem from our relationship with our families and how we felt loved, how we translated love, how we felt a sense of belonging to our family, and how safe we also felt within our family. Now, all these translations that were made when we were younger, many of them were unconscious, meaning they were just made automatically that you didn't even know that you made them. And some of them were made in a more conscious way where you can remember significant moments of time where you decided something or you felt something. Well, when we go back here to look at this specific pattern, what it usually stems from is a couple of different situations. One of the places that this stems from is how you felt and saw love that your parents gave you versus another sibling. So maybe you had an older sister or maybe a younger sister, depending on if you're the oldest or not or in the middle, but it can also be a brother. It doesn't always have to be a sister, but typically speaking, I do find that it's usually a sister situation where a sister got more love, more attention for some reason. So it might have been that there was, you know, that you were smarter than your sister and your sm your sister wasn't that smart. And so she really needed a lot of help around schoolwork and getting through school um, or she didn't get good grades. And so there was a lot of attention put on her. Maybe she was, 
was, you know, very emotional and needed your parents a lot emotionally. Maybe there was depression there with with your siblings. And so in some form, a sibling needed your parents' love and attention more than you. And you translated that in different ways. And depending on who you are, you translated it differently. But what you translated that to mean is that that sibling needs that love and attention I can do without. Now there's another pattern that stems from this too, which is the sense of like being the strong one or the independent one as a woman that figures everything else out where you don't need that much from others and yet you're starving inside because you just wish you could be taken care of in the ways that you take care of others. But with this pattern, it was an unconscious thing that you decided where you're like my sister or sibling needs my parents more than me or they are more important than me in some way and so that sets the tone for this pattern to come through in your love life where you're not fully chosen where somebody else is chosen over you now another way this can come through is if in your family you felt like your mom or dad really needed love and support from you more than you got from them, okay? So what I mean by that is let's just say that your mom was depressed and so it just felt like emotionally there was no room for you. Like she was feeling all the feels all the time and so it felt like she needed you more than you needed her. And you couldn't come to her even if you did need her because she was always going through something or you didn't want her to feel sad or sadder than even you feel when you share something with her, right? So those moments where you share with your mom, like let's just say you come back from school and you're crying and you're like, you know, my friend is no longer friends with me anymore. And your mom breaks down in tears and is like, oh my God, that's so wrong. I can't believe that happened to you. I remember when that happened to me when I was younger and it was heartbreaking. And she goes into talking about herself and her pain and her stories and her sadness. And now all of a sudden, where is there space for your emotions and what you're going through and what you're feeling? There isn't any. And so when you've had situations like that, it feels like emotionally you are never getting the space that you need or chosen. And so somebody else gets to have that not you. Now that can happen with your mom, but it can also happen with your dad, right? But I see it more often with mothers than even fathers, but it can happen with either, where you feel responsible for that parent versus them really having that sense of protection and attention on you. It's almost like the roles have flipped and you give more than they give back to you. So whenever there are these situations within a family, the way that comes out out as a pattern in love that can block you is that you are in these situations where men are choosing other women over you or committing to them. And so the reason I bring this up is not for you to sit there and blame yourself or your family or the situations that you've been in. It's absolutely something that you can move through. It's not something you're stuck with that you can never change. Okay, so the way you start to move through this is just begin. And this is something that I work with people for months around, right? But you begin to look at how you also are extremely important. So even if your sister really needed a lot of help because she was very emotional or she was depressed a lot and you decided she needed that, right? Like, I don't need it. I can figure things out. It's about letting yourself actually Say to your parents if they're alive, and if not, maybe it's something that you talk through with your sibling, but it's maybe even just an energetic shift inside of you with your family where you say, even though I am the strong one, even though I can figure things out for myself, I still need that love and attention. I still need to feel like somebody cares about me and I still struggle. I still have these deep emotional moments that feel really hard for me to handle even by myself. And to let that be known because often you are the person that is showing up consistently independent, knowing what to do, and strong. And so people start to relate to you that way and they don't know that you need anything, in fact. Even when you say it, sometimes it doesn't even translate because you seem so capable. 
And so it's about shifting that inside of your family system where you even say to your parents, like, I know my sister needed this and I wanted her to have that love and attention. But what I want you to also know is that even though I was the strong one, I also needed that too. I still struggled in many ways. I just figured it out by myself in ways that I knew how, but I still needed that hug that you needed to hear that it's going to be okay, that your parent is there for you, that that's what they're there for is to support you. But you never got that. And you really need to know that there is space for you to emotionally. All right. And like I said, let's just say you don't have your parents anymore. This is just an energetic shift that you can start to even play with in your mind when you are relating to your family because everybody's constantly relating to their family whether they're alive or not in their mind. And so it can be even a shift where you're like, I include myself in my family as somebody that also really needs that emotional support. You know, because maybe you got that physical support, but you didn't realize that you also needed that emotional support. And when you get that something shifts inside of you where you're no longer okay with accepting that somebody just is coming into your life for a little bit of you, that you start to expand what you expect and your own standards around love, which is that I need that full emotional attention. Just as much as I give it to others, I also need it, even if I am strong, right? And so you start to call in men, you start to call in people that really can hold that with you, where you let them in to hold that with you. And that forges a connection that really runs deep, where then a man that is emotionally available, that wants to commit to you, that doesn't want to lose you on any level, is there right by your side. But we first have to break this pattern inside of us internally first, okay? That's how deep this stuff runs. This pattern wasn't just there to torture you. It's not because there's something wrong with you. There's something that got translated at a very young age that is just getting played out in your love life. And it's telling you it's time to evolve. And if you want more videos like this where we dive into what are your love patterns, how are they impacting you from really calling in quality men, a man that is available, secure, excited, where you're excited and interested and there is a match, a connection that feels divine, then stay tuned here, subscribe below, hit that button, that subscribe button right below this video, hit it now so that you receive my videos on a weekly basis. Check out my next video where I talk about how dating and meeting quality men has nothing to do with your mindset. It has something to do with your heart and emotions. And I get into that in the next video. So check that out. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.